Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a follow up to the first video I made about all the Tarkov controversy that's going on. It'll probably be the last video I make on it as well. There's some new info that has come out very recently from Nikita himself, actually. Take a look at some of the feedback that the community has been giving overall and where I may have actually been wrong on some things in the first video, specifically when it comes to early access gaming and our role in it as gamers. So let's jump right into it. If you guys like the video, please drop a like on it. YouTube loves it, helps the algorithm a ton. If you like it enough to subscribe, that's even better. We're not gonna waste any more time, let's go. Hey ladies and gentlemen, hopefully my big head isn't in the way here, doesn't block anything on screen, nothing important. I've got a few clips that I've pulled from Reddit and a couple other places, Steam, that I wanted to go over before I just threw some B-roll on in the background. Uh, right here, and don't worry if you can't read this, hopefully you can, I'm going to go through it. it. It's nothing really important, it's mostly just how people are feeling overall and how people are responding to this situation overall. So... You know, right here at the top, and you guys probably already know this if you kept up with the situation, it's unanimously bad. It's unanimously bad. No one has really been on the fence about it. Everyone has mostly been on the side of, I do not like this. This is fraudulent. This is corrupt. This is bullshit. This is not the way this is supposed to be. So, you know, this all just went down like a maybe a week ago. So a lot of these comments are from three, four, five days ago. You know, my favorite thing is they're trying so hard to step around the DLC while getting caught editing what was offered on the store page. They 100% did that. They 100% got caught doing it. The page was archived. It was it was redisplayed after they had edited their own website and got caught taking it down. So if you if you didn't read the first Q&A response from Nikita on how uh, they viewed whether or not Unheard was a was a DLC. It was pretty much bogus, so this is just making fun of the way he responded to it. Uh, we, we don't think it's DLC. We call it a DLC because we would earn less money from people who already spent $150 uh, on the game that is supposed to include all future DLC. Uh, amazing that they are tripling down and gaslighting how to kill your insanely popular seven-year-old game. Probably because they are absolutely broke, sent, spent so much money on EFT Arena. True, Arena was a huge flop. You, you get the point here, guys. I'll play the clip a little bit just because I scrolled down on the page. I could have just done this in real time, but I ended up just saving the clips so I could pull them all in as I needed. The, the, the opinion is unanimous, guys, okay? The opinion is unanimous. I have yet to see a single person or talk to a single person who knows Tarkov, who plays Tarkov who isn't on this side of the fence, who doesn't think that this is a huge slap in the face to the Tarkov community, who doesn't think that this is going to more or less permanently damage the reputation of the game. I don't know if they're going to bounce back from it. They might bounce back from it. I, I don't know. Tarkov, Tarkov has like a cult-like fan base. I really don't know if they're going to bounce back from it. So guys, this is Nikita himself, and this is brand new information. Uh, another little clip that I pulled. This released five hours ago, so this is brand new. This is more or less his response to everything that has been happening, everything they've been made aware of as far as how people feel. He did a little Q&A uh, once before. It was really total bogus, wasn't very helpful or clarifying of anything at all. This is far more in depth, uh, so we're gonna go through this see what's being offered and see how people feel about this particular response. So we've come to the following conclusion regarding the list of changes and additions to various editions of the game. For owners of the Edge of Darkness edition, which was the original edition, the premium tier edition, if you will, 150 bucks where all of this was promised. This is where all the heat began. So Access to co-op PvE mode with persistent progression, what everybody was told they would get, it will be given out in waves. We plan to start it tomorrow. Now, I, gu I guess that's a, a good thing. I mean, he's saying that the Edge of Darkness owners are going to receive it. The being given out in waves thing is a little weird because in his sort of original interview or whatever, he said that it 
priority was going to be given to Edge of Darkness, uh, excuse me, to Unheard Edition owners. So that's still a little wonky. Um, I guess it just has something to do with the server capacity or whatever he keeps claiming they don't have the ability to achieve. I don't know. Seems like that's something you probably should have planned for before you decided to, to just pull this move. Whatever. Moving on. Faster insurance returns. Increased potential trader. Increased personal trader purchase limits by 20%. Increased starting PMC karma after it is implemented. Access to special stimulant craft. Increased charisma, nostalgia, quest line. Unique PMC dog tag. Unique armband. Unique item. Uh, with call-in mechanics for legacy devices, of ability to call in a friendly BTR, the item will go into cooldown once called, a unique PMC upper and lower clothing, ability to replace two das uh, daily tasks for free per day, ability to change your nickname, icon, and color. Okay, so this is what they are stating Edge of Darkness owners will receive. Uh, I'd have to go back and look at the list of what all uh, the unheard of edition owners are supposed to receive, but it seems like, unless I'm wrong about what the the one for one comparison is, they're trying to match the Edge of Darkness edition upgrades, if you will, to the unheard edition upgrades. They may not be one for one. They may not all be exactly the same. I'd have to reference the other list, but that's what this looks like to me. I'm going to play through the clip a little bit. I'll actually just drag it along because I start to scroll. Let's see. Where am I scrolling? Where am I scrolling? Here we go. So for owners of the standard prepare for escape and left behind editions, you get an increased stash size by two lines and the ability to purchase access to the PVE mode. Okay. For owners of the unheard edition, the big boy, you get a unique radio icon. Uh, uh, excuse me, item, Mark of the Unheard. It will be active only in PvE mode. Unique Distress Signal device will be available in both PvP and PvE modes. The item must be recharged in the hideout using high-end items. A $50 coupon for Escape from Tarkov purchases, additions, and expansions for those who have upgraded from Edge of Darkness to the unheard edition with the old price so that sounds to me like they're saying hey uh we can't give it to you for free like we told you we would uh but you're gonna get a 50 dollars off coupon access to escape from tarkov arena nobody gives a shit about escape from tarkov arena i don't know why they're even still trying to promote that unique pmc upper clothing dog tag change not blah 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 garbage for owners of all editions other than the ability to obtain Mark of the Unheard and the Distress Signal device through in-game quests, ability to obtain expanded PM, uh, PMC pockets through in-game quests. Uh, for owners of other editions than Edge of Darkness, ability to obtain the Legacy device, ability to replace one daily task for free per day. The ping limit for PvE mode will be removed for all additions. We will inform you in advance about the order and appearance of all of these changes. Okay. Ooh, this is the most recent response, recent response from Nikita. Let's see what people have to say about it. Okay. Ability to change nickname and icon color. So unheard additions won't get bullied. Uh, we don't want even more pay to win. We hear you. We're sorry. Now you can call in a BTR. I still don't get how that works on other maps. Making fun of it being used on smaller maps probably wouldn't happen. Uh, where did they say we're sorry? Good point. So now BSG fixes non-apology with pay to win bribes and even more pay to win. What's funny is, as predicted, a lot of people are accepting these changes in the comments. Um, da -da 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 -da. Is an EOD pay to win? Don't worry, now it's even more pay to win. So this, this set of changes here, guys, is, I mean, I, I guess for all intent and purpose, it, it is probably 
the most that they're going to do or most they could do you know in relation to their previous plan of just releasing this at a 250 dollars price tag where you really got nothing unless you did buy it i would imagine the community at least from what i'm looking at here is still going to be split right down the middle if not still waning more so to the negative side of things there are probably going to be plenty of people who are happier about this approach to it than the previous approach and i can see that uh i still think they're, they've gone about it completely the wrong way obviously but i don't know i guess they've done something they've done something uh and we'll see how people respond to it and we'll see what the overall state of tarkov continues to be in the future now i want to go over something a little different here guys because this leads me to the point that i made in the video i just recorded and released about this situation which is the overall state of early access gaming and our role in early access gaming uh there is a part of this argument that i made that i very well may be wrong about or rather than saying i'm wrong about really just kind of having my back forced up against a wall and that is the fact that there probably isn't going to be much that can be done about it. now that's not to say that as gamers in this community who are participating in these projects by giving these studios our money and supporting them through posting about the game and reviewing the game shouldn't be heard and we shouldn't be shedding light on these types of situations and practices but unfortunately this has become the new way to make first person shooter battle royale extraction games unless it's being funded by a triple a studio like dice or ea activision bungie whoever this is just the way that it's done now these studios simply don't have the money to take a game from start to finish on their own and no i'm not being backed by a game i'm not being paid to say this or anything like that i would not accept any type of offer like that even if i was because it's fake it's phony it's not my conviction but what do we do about that now i've had this little clip playing in the background of gray zone warfare which just released yesterday and i was conflicted because i really wanted to play the game i really wanted to play gray zone warfare i've been waiting gray zone warfare i've been waiting for this game man. and i've been waiting for this game because this is the type of game we need to push experiences that only one game for the last seven years has provided tarkov we need these types of games to come in and push it forward. But I'm conflicted because here we have an early access title, Gray Zone Warfare, that just came out of a closed alpha test. It's not even in beta, it's an alpha. It just came out of a closed creator alpha test and dropped into early access 48 hours later. Now, I fully and 100% believe that they're doing this, and I'm not saying they're wrong for doing it. I fully believe they're doing it because of the Tarkov situation. Rather than waiting another six to eight months to get the ba uh, game in a, in a better state, they're doing it now. <laughs> now they're charging $34.99 for it. That's the base game. You can upgrade to the Tactical Edition for another $23, so roughly $60 bucks for everything they're offering so far. But again, this is early access. It's it's at bare bones. You know, I've watched a lot of gameplay on it. It's bare bones. Uh, however, it does have a tremendous amount of potential. And I am excited to play it. I am excited to see where it goes. But overall, right now, if I were to download and play this game, then based on the first video I made, I would be a complete and utter hypocrite. So it's a really conflicting state to be in as a gamer who wants to play these types of games. Do I pay them the money that I have advised other people not to pay to play the game in early access, knowing that it's incomplete, knowing that the devs have a ton of work ahead of them to make this game something special? Or do I wait? Do I wait for the game to be further developed? When in all honesty, 
the game may never actually finish. They may never actually come to a place where they say, hey, this is it. This is the 1.0 version of the game. Here you go. From here on out, it could be an alpha beta for the next 5, 7, 10 years. So eventually, I'm going to have to buy it regardless and play it if I want to experience it. So you can see my point where I was saying I might be a little wrong and more so than wrong, we might just have our backs against a wall as gamers who are seeking these types of games. Because this is the new formula for these types of games, and because they don't have the ongoing funding to support the development, what do we do? What do we do? Now, to clarify where I stand on it, I am not going to pay for this game right now. The, the reviews about the game, uh, I'll skip ahead in this clip a little bit, are overwhelmingly negative for one reason more than any other. And that's not the AI or the gameplay or the guns or whatever. It's that the game has really, really poor performance. You're talking about people who are using graphics cards that are anywhere from 1660 to 4080. You know, i5s to i9s, Ryzen 3s to Ryzen 9s, whatever. You're talking about a whole spectrum of people who are using hardware from low to high that are having all the same horrible performance issues. I'm not talking about the bugs with the with the floating heads or the missing heads or whatever. The, the guns don't sound very good. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm not going to buy the game right now for that reason. Because the performance is so subpar... That even if I did buy the game right now, I may not even be able to play it. I may not even be able to stream the game. Now to move on from this, it's an early access title, so that's to be expected. You know, there are a lot of reviews here going over what's wrong with the game, the fact that they thought it was released too early to take advantage of the Tarkov situation, on and on and on. And that's probably true. I don't necessarily think it was the wrong move because we need games like this to come into the mix to help push us forward. However, it's it's just, it puts us in a bind. It puts us in a bind. And I want to see this game succeed. I want to see the developers take this game seriously and make sure that everything that's going on in the Tarkov community right now is exactly the opposite of what they choose to do. Now, this will be the last and final thing I touch on in this video, guys and gals, because it is getting along winded. So I appreciate you hanging around if you did while I spew my guts out here. The, the, the only other game that I've been made aware of that I'm looking forward to as far as what's coming down the pipeline in this genre is a game called Arena Breakout Infinite. Now this game is going to be releasing in closed beta on May 8th. You can sign up for the closed beta on their website if you're a PC gamer. Now this game is a game that has already existed on mobile. I guess it was a mobile franchise, a mobile series. I'd never heard of it before, but now it's being ported over to PC. Uh, it is very, very similar to Tarkov in the way that it's played. Uh, I can just let this sort of roll here. You can kind of see up top the way that it looks. Very, very similar to the way that Tarkov is, is played and, and, and set up and created, all that. So, again, um, I'm hoping that this being a game that is already in play comes out, out on PC and doesn't release in beta after going through a closed beta, but actually releases uh you know the requirements for it are pretty standard these days for a game like this 16 gigs of minimum ram you know a 2060 minimum nothing too crazy uh again though i haven't really seen or heard anything about this beyond being made aware of it through the tarkov controversy so anyway guys and gals to wrap this long gut spewing video up our backs are kind of against a wall. I'm conflicted because I want to play these games. And as a content creator in the gaming space, I kind of need to play these games because this is where people's eyes are going. They want to see what this is about. But at the same time, I'm over here promoting not supporting early access games that don't have a proven track record. 
And I also think that that is a good way to view it. So what do I do? What do we do? When the new formula for gaming in the battle royale first person shooter space is early access, what do we do? Do we wait six months for patches to be implemented and for the game to start receiving better quality of life updates and then jump in? Do we wait until they fully release the game, which in Tarkov's case is never going to happen? That game is going to be in beta until the day it dies. I mean, what do we do? There is no right answer, I suppose. You just accept the risk that is presented to you. And that may be where I was wrong in the first video. There may not be a full-fledged way around waiting for these games to fully release and fully optimize and fully this and fully that, because that may never happen. And that's a shame. It's a crying shame that the gaming community has been pushed so far out that we're begging and pleading for games that have to come from this type of business model to satisfy what we're looking for. But that's just the way that it is right now. And that may be the way that it is for the foreseeable future because games like Call of Duty and Battlefield really haven't supplied that type of, I don't know, satisfaction. So I would love to hear what you think about it in the comments. What do you think that we should do? What do you think that you should do as a gamer? What do you think content creators should do? Obviously, some of them get the games for free and they don't have to pay for it. But for those of us who aren't at that point yet and we do have to pay for it, do we wait? How long do we wait? I thank you guys very much for sticking around to the end of this video if you did. I know it can be tough to listen to somebody just rant and rave for 20 minutes. If you liked the video though, again, please drop a like on the video. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm these days. Uh, dig through the archive on the channel, guys and gals. Uh, we do a lot of gameplay. We don't do a ton of journalistic coverage. I do enjoy doing it. It's just not something I do a lot. But this has been like a high, you know, sort of a high status case. So dig through the content. If you enjoy it enough to subscribe, I'd love to have you on the live streams. Love to see you here on the channel more often. But let me know what you think about this. There is absolutely room in this argument for me being wrong. And I don't think there's any way around it. I'll hold off as long as I can because I do believe that that's, that is important and I do stand by what I said. But unfortunately, we just can't rely on these types of things to ever fully come to fruition. So we may have to play them in a less than optimized state if we want to play them at all. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, I'll, I'll catch you in the next video. Let me know what you think and we'll end it there. Take care.